Jason Davis, and I sing background vocals, play guitar, melodic art, glockenspiel, and various other auxiliary instruments. I'm Dan, I sing lead vocals, play bass, um, fiddle around with the glockenspiel and melodic art, and play some bass pedals as well. Um, I play drums, and I also am for harmonica every now and then. What's your name? Oh, <laughs> Dan. Oh, yeah. Um, we actually started the band uh, last summer while on tour with another band um, that we were playing in. We started writing songs um, that were kind of outside the genre that we were in at that time. And um, there, there just wasn't really room for it in that band to be able to like introduce them to the rest of the band members. We were looking for more of a band. Yeah. And um, we, we played in Denver actually on that tour. And uh, we played with this band called Team Awesome. And they were just like so happy on stage and loving what they did and like all the music was really lighthearted but had a great message at the same time and was reasonably complex musically but still really happy. We thought, man, we won't do something like that. And so we kind of started writing for it. Um, and when we got back to Portland, we sort of uh, finished some of the songs. And as we were finishing those songs, the other band kind of went on hiatus. So we were able to do this whole time. Yes. Well, that's an interesting one. We, um, actually, Daniel and I are really interested in archaeology. I mean, actually, it was science, and both of us took numerous archaeology classes in college. And we volunteered as a hobby on like archaeological digs and stuff like that. So, we are something that we love. Yeah, and we were kind of thinking about names that all one wanted to pick and whatnot. We had some cooler names and some catchier names, and it was like. I describe this as pretty much like a a light and poppy kind of rock band. Yeah. You know, personally, I've listened to a lot of like polar death metal. The indie rock scene that was coming out of like, Seattle and the Portland area growing up. Um, I mean, I had that influence by writing it that way. Um, I know you guys are like, Yeah. Well, actually, it's kind of funny because I grew up, my, my father's older. He's like 20 years older than my mom. And so I grew up with his music, which was like Bing Crosby and like Elvis and Johnny Cash. And he also had some Beach Boys uh, cassette tapes. And I used to put those Beach Boys cassette tapes on, on my little like Walkman thing, and sit and jump up and down my bed, and like, pretend that I was in front of this big audience, you know, playing these Beach Boys songs. And then, like, that's exactly where, like that kind of sound and that pop mentality that the big songs on like, um, after. I, I always knew that I wanted to play music like that, but just like feel the, you know, catchy, happy music. Uh, so, I mean, they're definitely like Brian Wilson's like a huge hero of mine, but then also like Johnny Cash. Um, I definitely respect like his lyrical content and like the honesty that he has. We, we definitely try to capture that in our lyrics. Like, um, we're not just singing about dancing and singing, we're singing about things that, that matter to us. Yeah, it's called The Wildwood Hymns, and it's actually a compilation um, of our first EP, Change the Dress, and our second EP, so it's, they're together, they're like one disc, and that sounds like, well, that's what everyone does, but we're actually releasing five EPs this year, so it's going to be a total of 25 songs. The best place is by far iTunes, yeah. yeah. Go on iTunes, pick it up there. Um, or come out to one of our shows. Yeah. It's been really great. Yeah. It's been fantastic. Yeah. And actually, um, we know Jesse from Falling Out. Um, and they've been a great band for several years and uh, have really made a name for themselves. And so we kind of got talking to him about the possibility and then. Um, yeah, from there, like our management kind of just set up the, 
thing, and you guys on and now we're on tour. We actually asked Ruth, um, it's funny enough, I think they're more of a kind of an epic sort of sound, and we wanted to play with them regardless of the stylistic differences, but we wanted a band that kind of went in between. Yeah, exactly. yeah and that was Ruth. Uh, yeah, they're from the same area, so they're hometown boys, and uh, it just made sense. Yeah. Um, we played, you know, Portland, Seattle, Spokane, Fresno, um, and then here, and then we'll play in Anaheim, a chain reaction, and then to LA. Yeah. And then back up to Sacramento, and then the Bay Area, and then back up. It's been really yeah. great. It's right. Yeah. And uh, what's been... I know, you never really know like what to expect. You know that there's people working hard on yeah. the motion. And it's been what's well, been a trip for us is that we've been in a number of bands before. But just coming to these venues and, and having like these people singing along to our songs, and I know we've never played for them before. I'm just like, wow, the internet is such an amazing thing for music right now. I mean it's kind of killing like sales and stuff like that, but it's making up for that by far with like that connection with the fans and, and I mean they some of the people like know more about us than I think we know about us. You know, they'll come up and like bring us like our favorite dreams. How in the world did you know that? You know, it's crazy. So it's been a, it's been an awesome response. Yeah, I mean, the band's only existed for six months, and we, uh, you know, the, the the response has been so supportive, and people have been so great that we're just like, well, we need to get out on tour. So we literally, like, almost when we got the songs done, then we were going on tour. So it's been fast, and it's. It's been easier than any other band. I mean, we've been in bands for two or three years, you know, and done tours, and worked really hard on it, and, and it's taken so long to get to where we're at right now after only a few months. So. Yeah. Oh. Last night. <laughs> yeah. Some, like, I don't know, we got bored at some point in the night. I just remember thinking to myself, like, wow, we're out in the middle of the salt flat, so I didn't want to call it in the morning. Yeah, give a little background. We yeah. um, so, um, we played in Fresno, and we decided since Fresno is kind of near Death Valley, and Death Valley has kind of a, I think a special lure for bands, you know, the Joshua Tree, that's for YouTube and whatnot. There's a lot of like photo, famous photographs out there and stuff. So we thought we'll go out there, have a little Jim some experience, and. Uh, uh, went up to the desert and it was pretty much empty for the most part. Like there's no one out there, yeah. And you know, we were I mean we weren't working necessarily at the party, but uh, definitely have a good time. And we went to a restaurant and uh, a British gentleman sat down beside us and introduced himself and started talking to us and he bought us a couple of drinks and then offered to uh, go hiking with us in the middle of the night. So last night in the middle of the night we hiked out in the middle of Death Valley for like two miles. Like out in the middle of nowhere, and we just kind of got, like literally, like we couldn't even see the lights from the resort. We were like just in the middle of nowhere, and uh, sat down and we kind of talked for a while, and ended up being like one, two in the morning. And we're like, well, we probably better go back yeah, at this point. Yeah. And plus, we had no clue. It took us so long to get back. I mean, it's like when you get way out there, it's salt flats, so that's pretty easy to find your way, I guess. But where we were, there's like these giant steep bushes and whatnot, and just all it's the same. So you kind of don't know if we're going to make it to this area. Which be honest. So, and we're definitely feeling the effects of the heat, um, being Northwest boys and whatnot, getting down here, we're like, oh, fuck, you wait Well, yeah, that's kind of, I mean, it's nothing in Portland, because this is where everyone lives. Yeah. But then when we get down here, we're like, oh, we're kind of looking at us, like, why are you dressed up for winter? Uh, yeah. Oh, next for city. I watched this video of uh, MTMT playing live in Mexico City, and it just looked like the most phenomenal like experience ever. I mean, obviously you have to be internationally huge to be able to draw that kind of crowd, but in fact, if we get on the tour like that and play in Mexico City for all those people, and, like everyone was just having like this tremendous time. It looked like, I mean, I've never seen an audience in the US act like that, like just cut loose and have like this great time. So. I definitely want to play somewhere down there, or in Latin America in general. I've seen concert footage in Brazil, it's the same thing. It's 
And people cut loose and have a great time. No one's afraid to dance. No one's afraid to dance. No one's trying to look cool. They're just having a great time. So I would have the Beach Boys, 1967, would be the headliner. And then probably MGMT. Yeah, and then, I mean, I'd have a four man bell. But, I mean, it would be so huge that it wouldn't really matter, like, time or an issue. Um, and then I think I'd have Jason Schwartzman, and then us. That would be my turn. What's the key thing would be to have it never end? Just keep going, going, going. Yeah, we love touring. It's, like, our favorite thing. We love this kind of stuff. Like, we love meeting you. We love just walking around. We really like our music. It's awesome. In August, actually, we just got our first show booked for that tour, and that's with Cursive in Arkansas. So hopefully, we'll jump on some more dates with Cursive, but I don't know. We'll see how that works out. Um, I've already known mine for a long time. That might suit you. Don't take this. Uh, teleporting. Yeah. They just make touring so much easier. Oh, well, that's so true. I know. I like, you'd be right at the venue. I like, you know, like a long eight-hour. <laughs> I know. Excursion. Okay. One of the big problems with touring is that you have to leave all your friends and family, hmm. and you know, for like a month at a time or something. And teleporting would be kind of awesome because you could be down here in Hollywood and then boom, go back north and hang out and watch like The Office or something, and come back down. Uh, it's a shameless book. And then, we'll take the yeah, show I, mean, too. I mean, that's not my superpower that I would choose, but I, I definitely acknowledge it's where my own person. Yeah. Good for it. Mine's kind of lame, but I always wanted to like, jump really well. Like, as a kid, I, was, I always like tried to jump on things. And I know, like, jumping's not really a superpower, but I, I think, like, like, I don't know what you call like the grasshopper guy. I don't know what's going like toad or something in the X-Men? Probably, probably. Would you have like a lot of control over your jumping ability? No, it'd be for that, I think. So you would just jump and you'd have no idea how high you're going? Yeah. But you'd have to have some kind of ability to like make sure you didn't break something when you came back down? That's, no, yeah, I would be able to heal. Because there's no part of it. Two parts of it. It's kind of like cheap. So when you fall on the ground and you'd be there for like 10 minutes while you're like yeah. fixing something. Exactly. Right. Uh, mine uh, would be unlimited knowledge, but it would be a two-parter as well because um, you, I would have to be able to turn it off because obviously you wouldn't want to know everything all the time or else you'd be really depressed. Um, but see, if I knew everything, like any other kind of uh, wish would be benign because I could figure out how to make a teleporting machine. I can figure oh, out how to jump really high. Oh, I can figure out how to make as much money as you ever wanted to. Uh, I can, you know, just about anything. So I'm a bit dull, I'm not sure. Jeez, there's a difficult thing in there. I think I'll just go with the practical joke side of it. Like, I would be endlessly entertained just by kind of doing things that people on the street like picking up or just like pulling things off of their off their shoulder for no apparent reason. Yeah. I'm a simple person. I think I would. I'm gonna say that my day starts now when we're in Hollywood. I go to like the Ivy and all like the you know VIP club and just walk in. You know whatever. I can. Can you turn it on or you just yeah. Yeah. Hold it? Yeah. Yeah. You can turn it off. So I would go into the VIP and, mix it up. and then turn it off and then I'd be like, oh hey guys, and they're like, who's that? I'm like, I don't know, but he's already here. He must be someone. Yeah. So. Okay. I think I would, I think I would tour people's homes. Like really nice houses. You could just get into a room and do. Yeah. But I felt like easy invisibility on yeah. us. <laughs> I'd also be naked all the time. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because like, I mean, you know, you have your nude beaches, you have all that kind of stuff. But if you walk right here, nude, you're obviously in trouble. So no one's actually experienced that. I mean, and if they have, we've done some time. So you can totally get away with that. It's yeah. awesome. Stay tuned for the next three EPs. Uh, Wildwood Hips is dropping on iTunes on June 1st. And then we'll have another EP for you uh, July 1st. 
officers and not filmmakers. So, a bunch of music to come from archaeology. And if you didn't get a chance to make it out to this tour, uh, we're going back on tour in August, like we talked about. So we can see you then? Yeah, we'll see you then. That's a whole nationwide tour. We'll be everywhere. So, Hawaii. Not Hawaii. Hawaii. Or Alaska. Or Canada. Or Mexico. So basically, it's everywhere in the lower 48. But not North Dakota. Yeah. Or South Dakota. Maybe Minnesota. Yeah. Sorry, Dakotas. I think everywhere else. Yeah, I think everywhere else. Pretty much. Well, no, not Rhode Island. And not Maine. Or New Hampshire or Vermont. But Massachusetts and New York. Not Delaware, though. But if you live in Delaware, you can go to Washington, D.C. show. Yeah, there's really no Yeah. Yeah. Um, you guys have anything to add? Yeah, uh, just uh, thanks for taking an interest in again. Thank you for coming out to the show. Yes. Everyone move to Portland, Oregon. <laughs> it's kind of the best place to be here. Trust us. Hi, I'm Jason Davis. And I am Dan Walker. I'm Benjamin Casey. And we're yeah, archaeology, yeah, yeah. and we love, love Fueled by Fertility. Oh, every time we meet, I want to sing and dance. I want to sing and dance. I want to every time we meet. I want to sing and dance.